All right, guys, welcome to episode 12 of Bar in the Dashboard. I'm your host, Sergeant Merrill, and I would normally have my co-host Sweat, but he is currently away on vacation, so to graciously fill in for him, we have The Aviator, also known as Eric. Howdy, howdy, guys. Eric, I think I'm going to put you to work, and I'm going to let you take this intro away. Basically, who do we have today, and uh, what's he got going on? Because he's created quite the buzz lately. Well, I've got to say, man, it's kind of a neat week for Pardon the Dashboard because, A, I'm on here in a different manner than I have ever been before, and I'm truly honored to be a host. But, <laughs> you know, we have a really unique guest as well because in the last 24 hours, actually less than 24 hours, he's gone from a little-known commentator or, you know, kind of a, a machinima maker, a guy who made videos that were from different games and consoles and whatnot and made them into some beautiful artwork. But now... He's blown up. Everyone knows his name. People are tweeting about him. People are tweeting at him. People are following him. His video went from 51 views to well over 5,000 in less than 24 hours, which as we know, 5,000 views isn't a lot, but when you're getting less than 100 views on a video already, to blow up that much is absolutely insane. And I think that basically the, the average comment has been, oh my gosh, how did you do this? It's amazing. And uh, <laughs> that's exactly the kind of people I like to associate myself with. Uh, he. It, uh, excuse me, his name is Rube Vids. Rube, it's great to have you on the call, man. What's up, guys? I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm still taking in all this like overwhelming stuff that's happened in the past couple of days. and Or actually, it hasn't been days. It has been like one day, not even. I uploaded last night around 11 o'clock, and it's, uh, I guess it's been history since. <laughs> I guess I stayed up later than I expected I did last night. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't you let us know a little bit about you, uh, you know, how your channel started and uh, what's brought to you where you are? Well, basically, I've always had, uh, taken a liking for uh, for video making. Uh, I've always tried to find out something different um, to make. Uh, I'm more towards the artsy kind of field. If you guys checked out some of my videos or have checked out my videos already, um, I was always into just like Halo montages and shooter games and stuff like that. But um, I never really uh, did anything too big that anyone would notice, uh, like as one of my videos does now. But um, I do go to school as a film major, and it has definitely opened up my eyes and ears uh, to listen and to see what the industry is all about. And it actually has uh, inspired me to make comment, uh, videos uh, using this field, and I have used it uh, exceptionally well, I guess. And I'm just looking to do big things and hopefully just take take it one step at a time. Huh. Well, I mean, I think that you came on the scene in a small way, apparently in the past, but this last video is so different. You know, it's so much more, there's something about it that really inspires you. I mean, I, I know that sounds kind of silly talking about a video game, you know, <laughs> but you've really done something different and I, I applaud that. It's kind of cool to see. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, I don't, I think I am, I am my own uh, inspiration in a way. But uh, I have my my sets of uh, favorite editors, but I, I can't really go and base myself or my work off any anyone else because uh, I think my stuff is that much different from anyone else's. And uh, I just it, it just it just came to me one day just to create something artistic and different. And uh, it just all just flowed at once. And I don't want to say it, it has been improv because uh, I have to let a, let a little secret out because the video that's getting so many hits and views right now, the beauty of Call of Duty, I woke up um, yesterday morning thinking that it was only gonna be like a 15 second little Twixter type of thing and then everything just kind of grew on me and I just started editing and just getting more clips and everything just started coming together really well and I found the perfect uh, audio or soundtrack for it and everything just flowed together really well, so. Wait, 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 so you literally made this in one day? Yeah, I start. I started. Uh, yeah, I guess it's hard to believe. I started yesterday. I woke up around one o'clock because I'm the man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> get get my 18 hours of sleep in. I uh, and then I started around 2 p.m. and I basically finished the whole entire video and then I had to color correct it, so that took up another hour. But I basically finished around 10 o'clock and uploaded it around 11. And I am a Machinima director, and I was kind of uneasy about uploading it to Machinima, so I wanted to put it on. My channel first, just like for some like my 800 whatever subscribers would see it and let me know if they liked it enough. And regarding what they thought, then I would upload it to Machinima or not. But uh, I really had no idea that people would like it so much. I because I was skeptical about putting it up because um, it didn't have any gameplay in it. So I mean, it is that much yeah. different, I guess. So and let's make no mistake, this has gone viral. I mean, it's been tweeted out by some huge names, even the developer. Uh, or, or one of the developers from Treyarch, uh, David Vondohar, has tweeted this thing out. Actually, Eric can take the credit for this starting. 
Yeah, Eric. <laughs> uh, I know. I just. I'm sorry to butt in here, but I just like I was like very happy about like my video and how it came out. So I was just like Eric and like Optic Hex and like I just tweeted like a bunch of different guys like if you could take the time, please just look at this video and let me know. And like I'm so happy that you guys took the time to look at it because I'm pretty sure you get a bunch of messages saying like, hey, look at this video because often kids like want to get their subs up or view count out. But I just really wanted just to make you guys see it and view it and give me back your feedback because your feedback is the only thing that I really, really care about. Like, I don't want to sound like 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 a nice guy, but this is really how I how I feel. And I just really want to get like the feedback from a lot of big names in the YouTube community. Well, I think it's important to note, guys, and anyone listening to this as a podcast, you guys need to remember that every business in the world, every you know group of people in the world, it's all relationship based. And you know, I got tweeted, it's 140 characters. It's something I can handle. It's not a lot of characters. So I've got 140 characters to go through and kind of, <laughs> you know, see what he says. He says, hey, I have a kind of different video, check it out. I look, okay, it doesn't take me long to look. It's one of those things. I checked it out. And initially, this is kind of my, my, my tactic when I look at a video that someone's tweeted to me. I'm hovering over the X. If as soon as it's annoying, as soon as I don't like it, bam, it's off. This one grabbed me. I watched it three times, then I sent it to T-Mart, Optic, Optic X, and a couple other guys, and it just blew up from there. Because when something's really good and really unique that hasn't been done before, it can't help but be, be successful. And I mean, that's the biggest thing. Anyone who's you know trying to become successful on you know any kind of a YouTube or, or any kind of a social website like YouTube is, all you have to do is be different. You know, I'm successful yeah. simply because I go flying and I do silly shenanigans on my website and people like that. And same exact reason why Rube is going to be successful is because he's putting together things that are high effort that don't take 15 minutes, you know, that are, you know, I honestly would not have been surprised if he told me it took him like two weeks of rendering to make that happen. I'm a little pissed at him for making, for taking less time. <laughs> it, <in> <laughs> it takes me like 10 to 20 hours per video. <laughs> to make a production, so. Well, it's also uh, about passion. I mean. I mean, yeah, you gotta be different, but if you do something that everybody else does and you're just stuffing your passion into it, I think people can see that too. Yeah. So with your video, I think it really showed. You really yeah. enjoy and, Call of Duty. Yeah, and I think that uh, it took me, I guess in a short period of time or like less than what you thought is because I don't wanna sound like conceited or anything like that, but I, I know what I'm doing. I know what I want in the overall final product and it just all comes together basically. And that's like the majority of my videos. Like I, I have like a set goal in mind of what I want, but usually everything just comes together and it flows really nicely. And the syncing just like takes its own uh, effect, I guess. Right. Okay. Now, when we were getting to know you, uh, we were asking a lot of the games that you used to play before you came to COD and uh, Halo was one of the biggest ones. So from your experience, I'd like to talk a little bit about Halo versus Call of Duty because I know you pay attention to both. Just judging from your video, I know you take a look at a lot of different aspects of the game. So I wanted to know your opinion. What's better, Halo or COD? <laughs> well, when I first started out on the shooter uh, community, it was all about Halo, but I slowly started moving towards the COD because Halo is all about rank, and if you're not good, then you might as well not even play the game because it's not fun and because there's a lot of uh, MLG and professionals out there who like want to take your spot. And it's just it's def definitely fighting for like a like a first place in a way. But Call of Duty, you play with friends, and if you go negative or you or you lose the game, you still get points for it. So you, there is some uh, benefits for that. But Halo, if you lose, I think you're done. But when I first started out, Halo grabbed me. Halo Three actually. Um, I never really played Halo Two at all. I I have to be honest. I played it maybe like five or six times just because like my friends really wanted to play it. But yeah. Um, all my friends started getting Halo, and I bought it, and I played it. Um, I remember the first time I ever played it, and I sat down for four hours. I never did anything for four hours straight. And I sat down, and I just got lost in the game, and I immediately fell in love. And then after the four hours were up, I was just like, wow, I just sat and played campaign <laughs> for about four and, like four and a half hours, and I didn't know what was going on. But um, it did become competitive within my uh, my school because like we're freshmen in high school or sophomore in high school and we don't know anything else. We're not into girls yet, you know. So we yeah. we we, <laughs> we talk about shooter games. So we look we look forward to play when we get home from school. And uh, everyone was starting to become better. And I first started out, and no one wanted to pick me on their team when it first came out. And eventually, <laughs> I made it like a personal goal for myself to be better than everyone. And then I think I'm gonna talk about this in like another video, but like addiction came over, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, shit hit the fan, and yeah, it was I know that. trying to get a 50, and it was it was terrible. 
<laughs> well, I've got to say, like, I actually, I kind of have the same history. I didn't uh, get an Xbox until I was 18. I walked into a GameStop. Some kid was trading his in. I paid 60 bucks for an original Xbox, bought Halo 2, and started with the LAN parties up at this college campus yep. I was living beside. I'm here to tell you, man, 16-player LANs, rocking face, rocking out the SWAT, man. Oh, it's that different. was so much fun. <laughs> now, I have to say... Um, the reason I didn't like Halo 2 is I kind of ruined it for myself. I was in Korea at the time that it came out. So I don't, I'm not sure if you all remember, but uh, there was a, a big controversy at the time that the French version of Halo 2 got released first. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it did. And it was available in Korea. So I marched my ass down to the, uh, to the e-market and I got myself a copy of Halo 2 in French. And uh, <laughs> here are your enemies running around going, suck the blue. It, it's old after a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's epic dude that's, that's epic awesome. I, would, I actually i think i'd like to see a video can we get a video of sergeant merrill running around playing halo 2 in french and just see if he it can remember horrible. all the phrases that'd well, be great worse is we didn't know they didn't fucking tell us <laughs> so like we're, we're playing it and like the aliens start speaking and i'm like wow i guess that's their alien language sounds a lot like french <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know and like the little guys that run around and they're like they're everywhere they're yelling chocolate blue <laughs> bad. That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, on topic, uh, Halo versus COD. I gotta say, COD is is a little bit better because of the reason you said it's more playable for everybody. Yeah, it's it's a it, it fits a a bigger kind of audience. And I, like like I said, Halo. I think I believe is more skill based. Like Call of Duty is too, but you can have a lot more fun. You can just like go around and Call of Duty and joke around. It, it, it like I guess you can too with Halo and the social playlists, but. Usually people ended up uh, being serious about it, like for the reason why they bought the game. But Call of Duty, yeah. I think it's just an overall like fun and great experience you can have with friends. Yeah. Agreed, man. Halo, Halo is a, a skill-based shooter, no question about it, man. I, I, I can't <laughs> tell people that enough. All right, guys. Well, moving on to our next topic. Uh, this is going to be Eric's topic, and it's going to be great, man, because uh, a big paintball event was held in Chicago uh, this week. And a lot of really huge uh, commentators from YouTube went there. Woody's Gamer Tag, FPS Russia, Merka Durka, a lot of people. Even T. Martin was there. And uh, Eric, take this away, man. What happened? Because you have some outstanding footage you're going to be coming out with this week. I want you to let us know what happened and uh, what shenanigans ensued. Well, keeping this with our three minute or so plan, I have to, uh, I'll try to keep this fast. First off, <laughs> I, have, I have to say. It never say, happens. It never does, but hey, at least we can try. Uh, it was amazing, man. I did not even know about this event until I want to say Saturday night, I think it was, about 3.45 in the morning, so I guess 3.45 a.m. Sunday. I, uh, I'm on the line with Woody's Gamer Tag. We've been playing some Call of Duty, and uh, he says, well, Eric, you really should come up to Chicago this week. We're going to be playing paintball, and it'd be really fun to hang out with you. And I was like, well... Okay. <laughs> so I left my seven month pregnant wife behind and I flew to Chicago. Uh, basically, literally last minute, you know, I bought my ticket Sunday afternoon and flew out on Thursday at like 4 a.m. And uh, yeah, so it was freaking ridiculous, man. It was absolutely nuts. Uh, T Martin, Mirka Durka, FPS Russia, Woody's Gamer Tag, Gassy Mexican, Paintball Kitty, great group of people, plus about 2,000 other paintballers. All descend on this place, and it is insane. I mean, it's literally insane. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm going to have videos up on uh, FPS Rush's channel and on Woody's. I think Woody's video is going up tonight, a new one, and uh, really cool stuff. It's just kind of cool to see how, I, I don't know, just kind of see how, how different people play games and how different yeah. uh, you know, mentalities stream from you know the way they play Call of Duty, the way they play paintball. Like FPS Russia, that dude is insane. He is sliding around, running around, throwing grenades, jumping up and down. He's a beast. <laughs> and then you got Woody, and Woody is a control the engagement guy. He is very careful of what he does. Occasionally, he runs out like a crazy person and gets you know eight kills and then dies. But a lot of the time, he's very paced, and he's, he's patient, and he's wise. And I'm like, dang it. I would be dead like a thousand times by now, <laughs> but uh, it was really cool. I got to say, it was really, really neat. It was neat just to get to know, you know, some of these people you know from YouTube in a in a real life situation. I slept in the same bed as Mirka Durka for four nights. That's uh, <laughs> a little creepy. I don't know. <laughs> Is he a cuddler? Uh, the first night, yes, uh, a little too much. And I, I, I've been married for almost two years. I'm used to being in a cuddling, a cuddling situation, and he weighs more than my wife. Let's just put it that way. Uh, okay. <laughs> he was definitely the big spoon then. There you go. Oh. <laughs> so you spent uh, you spent the night in the same hotel with a lot of these guys. Uh, what was the craziest moment that you had this weekend? 
Ah, the craziest moment. I have to say, Woody's Gamertag is world-renowned for his ability to consume alcohol. And by that, I mean his uh, ability to consume very small amounts of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> After two Mike's Hard Lemonades, uh, we broke out the wrestling pants, and uh, he put on his MMA shirt and showed that he was the king above all of us. The man, seriously, like is an amazing, amazing uh, grappler. I'm awful at grappling. Every fight I've ever been in has been like one punch or two punches and over. I've never, yeah. ever been in a grappling match, per se. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he, he beat the crap out of all of us until four of us got on top of him, and uh, that was just a little gay. It was pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Well, I want to talk about one more thing before we get off of here because this is actually something that you've been kind of living the last couple of days, Ooh, and that's man. L.A. New Bar because uh, – I, I actually watched some of your stream earlier today where you're going around basically not shooting prostitutes, not shooting all the <laughs> civilians. And it's kind of weird. I feel like it's a rock star game, but uh, not a rock yeah. star game. Tell me more about it, man. I want I want to hear your, your opinions. Let me say, man, I put in work today. I woke up at uh, 730 this morning. I live streamed yesterday, and one of the biggest complaints was from these European people that were awake at 3 a.m. And they're like, you never stream for us. And I was like, oh, you know what? My wife's going away on a photo shoot tomorrow. I'm going to have the all, all day to myself. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to stream all day. So I woke up this morning. I put in L.A. Noir, and that game is a blast, man. I'm telling you. It's uh, it's so different from, from any other Rockstar game. I thought Red Dead Redemption was a huge step away from the whole uh, crazy GTA scene. This, I think, focuses it even more. They're taking that engine. They're just they're going in a huge direction with it. And... Uh, if you're a fan of any type of criminal criminal investigation show, you're going to love it, okay? It's it's the same format. The show starts off like a castle show, man. It, it shows off, and they show the murder. They show what like a little bit of what happens, and then the rest of the case is you run around collecting evidence and interrogating people, and interrogation in this game is, is something else. And they're using <laughs> a lot of different actors that you'll recognize. You'll recognize them instantly. Really? Um, I saw Matt Parker from Heroes. He was one of the guys. Nice. Well, like, you're looking at it, and you know it's him. The The face looks exactly the same. The facial expressions are just phenomenal, and it's just uh, it's a great game. And I had a lot of fun with it. I was sitting here streaming, and uh, whenever you're uh, interrogating somebody, you know, you can call them on a lie or something like that, and I'll look over at the stream. I'm like, hey, what do you guys think? It's a great game to watch, a great game to play. I highly recommend it. Well, I'm going to have to check it out. I, I don't know, because, like, Ever since I started my YouTube channel, my gaming time has gone from, you know, an hour a day to about uh, 12 minutes a day on average now. <laughs> so it might take me three or four years to get through that game, but it looks fun. Yeah, it is. It is. And if the downloadable content is anything like they had for Red Dead Redemption, I definitely think it's worth buying. But I did want to get to uh, Ruvid's opinion on the, the Grand Theft Auto uh, franchise. You had an opinion on it, man. What was that? Um, well, basically, I... I haven't really played uh, LNUR to know. I just know that they spent a lot of money in production. Uh, so I think I heard about $200,000 in production for actors, which is excellent, which actually makes you want to go out and check the game. But uh, I have gotten GTAs in the past, and the only one I really liked, I think, was the GTA, the first one for, like, PS2 or the PS1. Vice but, City, baby. Yeah, like yeah. like like the one oh. with overhead view. Oh, no, no, that wasn't Vice City. Well, no, well, that I was know. Grand Theft Auto like, one and two. Yeah, I don't know. Wow. Two, it was like an overhead. Yeah. And I, that was like the one I enjoyed the most. I used to play that really? Was, yeah, 10 or 11. I used to love that. But when I, I bought the last one, and um, after playing it for a couple hours and, and doing the missions, I just find it very like repetitive. And uh, I don't know. I Not a lot of my friends had it, and I just found everything just to be kind of a little bit boring, and, every, and all the missions just like, go get this and go beat up that hooker, yeah. or whatever, you know? Like, I, I, I like... I like like the storylines and everything like that, but um, it, it it all becomes kind of repetitive in a way for me. And uh, I find out that uh, shooter uh, video games are more my suiting, and there's always something exciting to go and find out about that because it, every it's matchmaking and you know, so it's different every day. Yeah, I think and that's it, the one reason. It, go, go ahead. Good. I, I think that's the one reason I liked the uh, the GTA series, especially San Andreas, because San Andreas, I could fly a helicopter, fly an airplane, jump out of anything I wanted to, ramp a motorcycle off the top of a skydiver, <laughs> a sky, off the top of a sky a sky rise, and uh, jump off. Okay, I have a trend here. Never mind. I'm just jumping off of things and pulling a parachute. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but it was but really, fun. The past couple months, they're stepping away from that. They're using the same engine. Actually, this new one has a wicked facial recognition engine, but... 
but they're really stepping into some really interesting things with it. I mean, Red Dead Redemption did get a little repetitive, but they stepped so far away from the norm that I was like, this is really cool. And this one, they've stepped even further away from it, further away from the norm, that it's it's like a TV show for every case. And uh, huh. I really think it's going to win Game of the Year. Mark my words. Call me on <laughs> it. I'm saying it now. I think it's going to win Game of the Year. Wow. I think I think Battlefield 3's got Game of the Year in the bag, man. You think so? I don't know. I think so, man. I think so. I, I especially, I don't know. I don't know, though, because it's 30 frames. If they went to 60 frames, Battlefield 3 would own it. Yeah, that's true. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right guys, man. Um, well, I think we should call this a day. Yeah. I think uh, I think we're coming up on the end of episode 12. Do you have anything else you want to put out before we end this? Uh, no, I think. Or... Nope. Good to go? No. All right, guys. Yep. Um, like I said, we'll, with all part in the dashboards, uh, this is a group effort. Please check it out on YouTube. If you're watching in the live stream right now, check it out on YouTube. Look in the description. I try and get everybody that contributes gameplay to me, uh, everybody that helps me out in any way, I try and give you a thank you. There's a lot of effort that goes into part in the dashboard, and it's not just for me. Also, uh, you may have noticed from the last video, we also have sponsors. So I want you to uh, take a second to check them out because without them, this is not going to be possible. So check out the sponsors. But that's all I have for episode 12 of Pardon the Dashboard with Rube Vids. This is Sergeant Merrill out here. Later.